Hey boos, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ina. I'm gonna show you how to go from crusty to flawless. Girl, I don't know what rhymes with crusty, but basically this is the current state of my skin right now. It's a hashtag transformation day and I'm gonna be doing this in partnership with Estee Lauder for the double wear 24 hour stay in place makeup. Okay, so what is going on with my skin? How do we get here? How do we get out of this? And, and how can I still do a whole face of makeup without still looking crusty? Well, I had a chemical peel. It was a quite deep peel, which means I peeled a lot. This is a picture of what my skin looked like two days ago. This is sort of the aftermath. Like all of these dark, that was not there. <laughs> I had acne scars, but they were not this bad. But that's a normal part of getting like really deep chemical peels. It's completely normal. It's a lot of flakiness. It's a lot of drying. And some of the ways that I do my makeup when I am going through a chemical peel, I slightly different, not too, too different, but they're slightly different from, you know, like a normal, typical, average, smooth, poreless makeup day. Cause whenever y'all are coming to my videos, you're always like, what pores? And like, yes, it is nice to have visibly great skin, but my skin's not perfect. And especially right now, right now I'm struggling. So I'm gonna walk y'all through that process. Now, before we get started, don't be rude, man, subscribe. Like, I don't, I don't see why you wouldn't. I'm, I'm pretty. <laughs> That's good enough if you ask me. Okay, so my skin this week is very much giving reptilian. <laughs> It's giving butterfly in a cocoon, like it's just, and then on top of that, I have the nerve to be ashy, so double homicide. I haven't done any skincare yet because I kind of wanted to walk y'all through how I prep my skin for days like this where I'm peeling or my skin's really dry and flaky. My skin only does this when I do a chemical peel. And I start by cleansing with a cleansing oil. Now, if any of you have experienced the magic of <laughs> what it feels like to get a chemical peel, you'll know your skin is probably more sensitive than normal. So it's really important to not do a lot of, you shouldn't be scrubbing at all while your skin is shedding, you freaking weirdo. Keep your hands to yourself, bro. But I find that you Using things that are oily, like cleansing balms or, or oil cleansers, really help kind of loosen up the skin without actually pulling. You cannot pull the skin off. You can't do any of that. You gotta keep it cute and keep it at a minimum. So I'll do this for a minute. So it's important to be really gentle when you're doing this. And one thing that also helps is to do rolling motions because I feel like the skin just, you could just feel it slothing off. Do you see? That is disgusting. Any like little gray, that's skin. It's freaking sick, man. I'm just waiting for you to come up off the surface. You too, all of that? None of that was there. But that's what chemical pills do. Like it'll make, chemical pills will low-key make you look uglier than how you started. Like it's the worst. <laughs> but then after you just get this beautiful baby soft layer of fresh skin, which is awesome. You know, that's why we, that's why we love chemical peels. Okay, so my skin is completely dry. Still ashy, actually very ashy. My skin is really tight, very toit and firm. I rinsed off the cleansing oil, washed my face with a facial cleanser, and look, remember that spot? Go get him! <laughs> I look stretched. Okay, don't be alarmed. <laughs> My skin is completely dry because I have to do that in order to use this mineral body peel. Now this is great. <laughs> Not just when you're peeling, but when you just have drier, flakier skin, you're supposed to shake it up and spray it on dry skin. Let it sit for like three seconds and watch this. So you just roll it up. Some of this is a combination of the product like peeling on itself, but also it's gonna actually like help roll up some of the dead skin at least the like lifted chunks of skin, the disgusting parts. But honestly, the oil itself kind of did it for me. Oh my God, I thought it was gonna be a disaster because I have a shoot tomorrow. And I'm like, I don't even know what to tell my makeup artist because girl, how y'all doing in DC? I heard it's cicada season. So if you're following this technique right after a chemical peel like I am, don't use this product right after your peel. Wait until like the tenderness is gone. This is like day four for me. So my skin isn't tender. It's not as raw as it was three, four days ago. You don't need to be doing none of that rubbing that soon, okay? This is like almost the tail end of the hard part of the peel. This is disgusting. As if my forehead wasn't shiny enough, this is always what my skin does after a peel, this. My forehead just feels, my skin is way more tight, way more firm. Skincare, no toners at all after a chemical peel. Just lots of Arnica to smooth and calm. This is a serum for my esthetician. And then some stem cell because we are repairing the skin. Okay, so I thought I was gonna need a sheet mask to really seal in more of the moisture, but it turns out I don't. My skin so far looks great with just the serum, so I'ma just go with it. And uh, if you see little thingy things like hanging from my neck, I cannot be liable. It is probably skin. Don't judge. This is the current state of what I'm dealing with right now, okay? Now the most important part is moisturizing. So I 
I'm trying to peel, so because I am wearing makeup, I am gonna put on quite a thicker, heavier cream to like actually seal in all the moisture. You can also mix that with your foundation too. The worst thing about peeling though is my skin will still be really dry around my mouth area and oily up here. It's just the worst because skin prep is so confusing when you have oily combination skin. Yeah, I did it. Okay, now we're gonna get into complexion my favorite topic on my channel. This video is sponsored by Estee Lauder. I bet y'all don't know this, but Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place Makeup is the number one foundation in the US. And I'll explain to you why she is and how it has been that chick. So the state of my skin as it is today, dry, flaky, crusty, rusty, dusty, and possibly a little musty. But the good thing about, and this has always been one of my favorite characteristics about Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place Makeup. I know that's such a tongue twister, but I just have to say the whole name. So you cannot wear powder. And as you guys know, I'm a huge powder Dan, when God was handing out DNA, I'm pretty sure he made me like 70% translucent powder. I just love a lot of powder. But when they call this stay in place makeup, they are not playing. Like it literally does stay in place. Self setting, it does not need to be set. It's also transfer proof. It's one of the only liquid foundations that I use. And I've, I've come to get to know over the past couple years, like literally since I've been doing makeup, that's actually transfer proof. It don't move. I'm gonna give the bottle a good shake. And this foundation, by the way, does actually provide 24 hour wear and it comes in 56, 56 shades. Now I'm gonna take a bit of this on the back of the palette. This is gonna sound so weird, but I find that like painting the foundation on when my skin is peeling gives me a little bit more control. I do still use foundation brush, but I like to kind of lay it on first, like literally painting a canvas. That way I can kind of flatten any skin. <laughs> this sounds so disgusting. I can flatten any dead skin if I have to. And then after I'll kind of like clean it up with the brush. The coverage on Double Wear is insane. It's very unclockable. And when you find the right match, I mean, you should probably do that. When you find the right match, it is such an easy formula to work with. There's not a lot of like building because just with that one stripe, look at how much I was able to cover. It's described as a cashmere finish. I think it does definitely feel lightweight. It's oil controlling and oil free. It's one of the best formulas in my opinion for oily combination skin types because like I said, it's it definitely speaks to that stay in place. It don't budge, girl, she don't move. And that's not just like a claim, like she literally don't move. You know what's also great is that I wouldn't describe this as like quick drying and super mattifying. There are some foundations that I've used that are so matte, I feel like I have a new face, but not double wear, actually not at all. This is quite an easily buildable. Did you see, you saw that, you saw that, right? This is a pretty easy formula to work with. It doesn't dry so quick that like you can't work with it or build it up if you need to. You probably really won't need to build it up that much though. And y'all clocked how I didn't put on translucent powder underneath, right? Like how my skin was still shiny when I applied it. I do that because this formula is so budge proof, girl, that I don't really need to do a lot of the long wearing skin prep that I usually do. And I didn't even apply a primer. That's how much confidence I have. I sometimes do like to apply a primer, but you know what, using a primer is kind of the equivalent of using good skincare. And I went pretty heavy on the skincare today. There's also shade matchers on the Estee Lauder website, which I will of course have linked down below in the description box. By the way, all of my followers that live in the Caribbean, the tropical climates, Florida's, Las Vegas, humidity, lots of moisture in the air. This is the foundation you take with you on vacation. I'm not just, say, I'm not just saying that. Like I'm being dead serious. If I wanna go on a trip and I need to be prepared for different types of climates, like maybe I'm going to the desert where there's like extreme heat, but it's also really cold at night. Like, I don't know, the Middle East, for example, I would take, I would take Double Wear. In my opinion, it's like one of the few complexion products that I have that caters to both extremes. And it will control the oil in your skin all day. I love the fact that even though this is like maximum coverage foundation, I don't feel like I'm wearing a lot of makeup. And I also didn't feel like I had to keep building and piling it on to get to the covers that I want. Okay, now I saved the forehead for last and I don't know why I did that. Ooh, that's too much, that's too much. I wanna show y'all how little I'm about to use to spread and cover up my entire forehead. I think perhaps points were made. This is also the type of foundation you don't really need a ton of concealer for. We are gonna conceal, because I do like a little bit of highlightation, but you don't really need a lot of it because look at all the coverage it gave me just from the base alone. Now, because our skin prep is a little bit different, and like I said, I do wanna focus a lot on moisture in this look because your girl is dry, your girl is flaky, my skin is not dependable right now. I'm gonna take a little bit 
of, this is like a facial spray and don't think about setting spray, think of like a skincare spray. I'm just gonna spray a little bit of that and then take a sponge, push that into the foundation so we don't lose any moisture and the skincare is embedded not only on my, my bare skin, but also in the makeup. Now I'm gonna do something that is a little bit controversial, girl, but I'm gonna do eyes first. <laughs> Normally I like to do my full entire base, like concealer set with powder. Like I'm pretty much powdered down and then I do my eyes, but I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. Only because when I do eyes and then concealer, I feel like concealer can help me kind of clean up some mistakes. Before I jump into my eyes, I'm gonna start by brushing my brows upward. I actually kind of like stenciling out my brow before I do eyeshadow. I don't know why, I just feel like, I never thought I would be the person who could do brows after shadow, but now I'm kind of obsessed with it. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Born This Way concealer, the multi-use sculpting concealer and a viola close-up of flat shader but what is that oh that's lash glue ew well it's not coming out so i got a flat little angle brush i have not drawn out my brow yet but i'm gonna do this with concealer first once I jump in the shadow, this to me kind of acts as like a little protective barrier so it doesn't like completely mess up the shape of my brows. Sometimes when I have on eyeshadow, it's like hard to see like, okay, where's my real brow? Where's the desired shape I usually go for? But doing this really helps me kind of like keep it in check. Okay, now blend that downward because we're gonna completely map out the eyelid with concealer too. So what you'll end up with is this and then we're gonna take some concealer again and put that all over the lid to act as primer for the shadow. Make sure I'm really getting the corners. Like that's why I like using sponges because it really lets me like get in the corners. My eyes are kind of deep set and it can be kind of annoying to work with. Okay, it's time for eyes. So I just got the Natasha Denona Zendo palette and I'm not gonna lie, I opened it and the first thing my eyes kind of gravitate towards is like this whole, this whole section right here, right? This green, it's just the green. I actually kind of want to recreate one of the eye looks on their Instagram page. So, okay, you see this kind of grayish, it's almost kind of olivey, this shade right here. Zeal, I'm gonna start with that shade. Get a little closer. So I'm gonna take this olivey gray color and really pack it on my outer V air. <laughs> Stop it, damn it. So I'm gonna take this olivey green, kind of gray, kind of taupe, kind of not, and pack it on my lid. Y'all, one thing I just recently realized really makes points is like raising your brow and then applying shadow. I don't know, girl, the landscape just be looking different. And it just kind of like flattens your lid. Does that mean I'm getting old? Y'all don't drag me for saying that, I know it. Anyway, I used to be against that because I feel like it literally manipulates the shape of your eye, but like now I'm realizing, yeah, it manipulates the shape of your eye in such a good way. I can really play with my eye shape by just doing, just doing that, just doing that. It don't gotta be every day, baby. Sometimes you can, you know, work with the natural eye shape. It's fine, it's totally fine. It ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Now when you do that, you gotta kinda make sure you're looking at the eyes, like both of them making sure they're even. Sometimes things, this one's a little higher, so I'm just gonna work around that and try to even it out. I like kind of a rounded eyeshadow shape. Like I just end up doing this and sweeping inwards more than I do outwards. Cause I feel like once you start sweeping outwards, it starts going out like literally outwards. Mm, not my vibe. Very 2019, gross 2021, catch up. Like, I'm sorry, it's just not giving. Then I'm gonna hop on over to Balance and I'm hoping to use this as a bit of a transition shade. So Balance here, it's almost like a peachy, peachy caramel color. Yeah, it's a cute little moment. And I'm gonna take Balance and use that as a buffer color around the edges of that dark olivey green. I'm gonna take this teal shade here, this one right here, the middle shade, and I'm gonna apply that all, oh, that is really, really pretty. Y'all, remember when like I used to only, old Jackie Ina, 2009 Jackie Ina used to always wear teal. Like it was just my era. <laughs> and teal is pretty girl, but I think, you know, like, as we get a little older, our taste and makeup changes, our aesthetic changes, our style changes, our wardrobe changes. So I don't really wear color like that anymore, but this is a nice, deeper teal and it's shimmery. It's really, it's really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna take this mint color here and I'm gonna bloop right in the inner corners of my eye. This is very pretty. It's looking very butterfly. I mean, it wasn't planned, but look, I'll go with it. Now I'm gonna dust off whatever little fallout that I have. Not very much though. And use a very creamy th 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 thick. I'm gonna use a really thick concealer because think creamy, think moisturizing, think hydrating for our very dry, very SOS emergency skin. This is the Kevin Aquan Central Skin Enhancer. It also has a ton of coverage. I'm just gonna color correct under the eyes. 
I wanted to use a layer of full coverage concealer first because after that, I'm gonna follow up with my Too Faced Born This Way again. This one I just use because I feel like it's just like a really good hydrating formula and we don't need as much of this. One, because we already have our double wear laid in place and the extra layer of concealer underneath it. My little technique lately is just kind of really keeping it in the middle, that little middle strip. This is a very fluid, liquidy concealer. So this actually works great for this technique and I'll show you what I mean by that. So as you can see, I only covered like half of my under eye. I'm gonna get my stash, my chin, just underneath my chin, the bridge of my nose, and then the center of my forehead. Then I'm gonna use the Danessa Myricks Cream Bronzer to hit here, here, not the whole shape of the nose, just the middle brow area, the cheekbone, Always brush upwards, girl, what the hell's the point? If your cheekbones look sad, angry, pissed. And I like to take away height from my face, whereas a lot of people like to elongate, but I won't do that, I already have a long, narrow face, so I cut my chin a little bit with that bronzer shade. Just a little bit. I'm not really taking away my facial structure, I'm just enhancing what's already there. Give it the times, babes. Okay, I really, really like this kind of cooked look around the edges of my brows. And look at me doing like a full, I still have not touched my brows. On a normal makeup day, I will already have had brows done by the time I get to this part, I think. Wait, actually, no, I do complexion first normally, and then I do my brows, and then I do my eyes. No, but it's nice to learn versatility over the years. I used to be very like one-sided with makeup, and I'm still kind of like that. Let's be honest, I'm still kind of like that. Once something works for me, like that's the only way I'll do my makeup for a long time. And you know, I love underpainting, but I really wanted to show y'all like the performance of the foundation on its own. Since we've already applied that cream bronzer on our forehead, start working your way into the concealer and blending the two together. And don't worry, if you don't get it done perfectly, you can go in with a sponge, you know, correct your mistake. Child, this ain't the finals. This is just a midterm, calm down. This would be the part where I switched to a sponge. And I'm gonna start in the center areas first, down the bridge of my nose, make sure that all blends into the bronzer on our side. And remember how I was telling you how I only apply concealer in the middle? It's because Born This Way spreads thin, so you can just start leaning it off and tapering it as you start getting to the outside of the face. And as you start getting to the outside of the face, start getting into your contour so that they both look like they're blended in together. Also, don't be afraid to like switch angles. Like sometimes I get very comfortable with just holding the sponge up right, but I found that with my under eye, I can twist it opposite and really kind of the brightness from the highlight well into the corners of my nose. It lifts the eyes and it makes it a lot easier to blend. Sometimes this area can be like a really stubborn, hard place to get into, but just twist your sponge the other way, girl. And you know, don't, don't be afraid to like, you. Use that dexterity, child. This concealer does not dry down. So get into it and blend. Don't be stingy. What I also love about doing this is my brow bone matches my under eye highlight. Now I go over the entire face and give it one last good blend. Stick it to them good. This is the Colored Rain Powder Bronzer in the shade Cinebay. I love this bronzer. I've been using this bronzer a lot lately. It looks like this and I have not set with powder which we won't be doing, any, only the under eye, but sometimes, I don't know, because this makeup is pretty smudge and budge proof, the foundation I'm talking about, it is okay to like bronze and warm up the complexion before setting with translucent powder. If you are that girl, I'm definitely that girl who normally does that, but like I said, this formula just doesn't really need to be set with powder, it's self-setting, it stays in place, it doesn't budge. I'll do like the middle areas because I am getting already shiny. That's kind of like inevitable. But normally I would literally set my entire face and then I would even do it. You guys know my whole jam. Like I would even do it like underneath the makeup. Like it's a whole process keeping the shine away. But, and also this is something that I have to remind people constantly. I look way more shiny on camera because of my lighting. And I don't know, like, do I just have to say that in every video now? Because people are always like, why are you so shiny? Like, first of all, are you not familiar with oily skin? Ashy, girl, get your life together. And two, my lights make it, like my lights are literally studio reflective. These are the kind of lights they film movies on. But let's be honest, I'm making feature films too. Okay, where's my Oscar? Cause I'm giving you cinematography quality and education and humor. You know what, Eddie Murphy could never. The more hydrating your translucent powder is, if you do like to set your under eye concealer with translucent powder, the better because we don't wanna be flaky. We don't wanna be matte. We don't wanna be dry. We just wanna take away the shine, baby. You can even use a blot powder. Blot powder is great for the step because it literally just covers the bases. You're not baking or anything like that, you know? One thing that I also noticed whenever I use concealers with double wear, I know I keep mentioning double wear, but it's just such a unique formula that there's differences that I wanna point out with regular complexion versus all the other complexion products that I use. Whenever I use double wear, I notice that like my under eye concealer 
also won't crease as much because it kind of like gets blended into the formula. Okay, so as you can see, I put just enough powder to kick the shine from our concealer. You know what I'm gonna call this? I'm gonna call this mapping. I mean, I guess it's considered highlighting, but I don't really know what else to call this part. It's not contour, I guess it's highlighting. But mapping sounds so much cooler. So I'm gonna map my nose, <laughs> the bridge of my nose. I'm giving it a shape, because otherwise like, it will just get lost. And I don't wanna contour my nose. I never, I literally never do, like unless I'm doing something really out there. Now this is the most satisfying part, because the forehead is just kind of jumping at you. And this is where people really tend to complain about the shine on my face. I mean, just like the most beautiful blended complexion. And even though it still looks like my everyday face, y'all feel like I look a little different, like a little bit softer, so no. Still unrecognizable? All right, I'll take it. I'm gonna take this dark green emerald shade here. Sometimes you gotta be careful with green. Like, oh God, I was like this. Girl, the fallout is too real. Right under the eye, I'm just gonna follow the shape. You have to be careful sometimes of green. I don't know what it is about green, but sometimes I feel like it kind of closes off my under eyes. So just be, just be light handed. Now I know a lot of y'all are real heavy handed, so that might be hard advice to take, but just make sure you use like a super, super fine pencil brush and do lots and lots and lots of blending. Okay, and back to our olive shade, this matte one here. And we're gonna blend that out around the edges. Oh my God, I forgot to pop up mint shade. Girl! I'm gonna take that olive matte shade and start buffering this out so it looks soft and blended. I've been really into the matte brow bone look, so I'm gonna take this pink, yo, it's a very, it's kind of a bright pink, so don't do a lot of this. And I've been kind of like into this like matte brow bone highlight situation, so I'm gonna take that and just kind of softly paint that into the blank space in my brow bone, just so that it mattifies and kind of like ties the whole look in, instead of just having shiny concealed skin there, just naked child. But isn't it crazy how eyeliner can literally transform the eye? This is with eyeliner, this is without. Girl! I just popped a little bit of black liner in my waterline, top and bottom. Then I'm gonna do a little light smudgy at the top. Y'all know smudge black liner is kind of my signature. All aboard, I'm gonna put on my lashes. Take some brow pomade and brush the brows upwards. It's clear brow pomade. Now my gem is pencil, so I'm just gonna go ahead and etch a sketch the outline. Now the rest of the filling in, I do with powder. Just making sure y'all can see me, I'm in focus and I'm keeping it cute. We need a little bit of orange blush to really warm up the complexion and to complement the eye color. Girl, let me make sure my brush cleanser is fully dried down. Have you ever done that? Put on product when your brush cleanser is selling brushes? Here we go. This is where I come to life is with blush and I like a lot of blush. Okay, maybe not as much as some people, but I like a blush it's like a blush happy look. And I like it up my cheekbones too. Girl, this look is kind of thirsting for a deep brown chocolatey lip. And you know what? I could not think of a better time to incorporate Nima's lip collab with Dose of Colors. This lip set is so freaking gorgeous. I'm gonna take her chocolate chip liner and stencil out my lips and the quality. <laughs> Let's discuss. Dose of Colors makes my favorite lippies, like in general. So them collabing with Nima, <laughs> The way who really won, like it's a win for them and it's also a win for Nima, but like those of color won because they got to collab with Nima. Nima's freaking amazing. And sometimes brown lipstick shade look too close to my skin tone to actually like, which is nice because you know, then it's just a nude, but sometimes they're like too nude. This is nice because it actually shows up as a deep brown on my complexion. Then I'm gonna take her lipstick in the shade Penny. Oh. I did not know that was this light. Hold on, time out. I'm gonna take her liquid matte in the shade Like To See It. It's a deep corresponding matching liquid lip. Oh my God, look how rich and beautiful it is. I like how it just blanks out my lips completely. Coverage bomb. Mm-hmm, it smells good. And then lastly, I'm going to add her glow. That's it. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. I am very proud of you. Hopefully you've walked away feeling like you've learned some new tips on how to deal with super dry, crusty, flaky, disgusting. 
I'm sorry. I know y'all gonna be for saying that. It's just the current state of what I'm going through right now. I'm a little, I'm a little mad. So we shared some tips on how to deal with super sensitive, dry, flaky, crusty, gross skin. I've definitely given you quite the transformation, not because of the look that we banged out, but because of, you know, what the before was giving. Thank you again to Estee Lauder for sponsoring today's video, especially since I get to feature one of my favorite and most timeless and classic foundation products. If you wanna check out everything featured in today's video, of course, hit up the description box as usual. Okay, one last look, cause I really like the way the color in this look came together. And I really, really like the lip. And I can't believe my skin doesn't look crusty. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna watch another video, I'm gonna go ahead and link it right here. Easy access. Go ahead and click it, you know you tempted.